Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. My bio reads from troubled teen to teacher of the year, 100-pound weight loss, blah, blah, blah. You know the sort of thing you're working on in your before and after life story. So at the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. I like to use the example of a pie for several reasons. First of all, as a little girl, I used to always get into the pies. I like pie better than I did cookies or cake or ice cream or anything else. If there was a pie around, it didn't last for long when little Debbie got into it. Yes, I know little Debbie has a snack for you. No, little Debbie will eat your snack when that little Debbie is me. But the other reason I like pie is because if you are a mathematician or you remember in school when they taught what pi means, it's 3.14 when it's narrowed down. And that gives us a date, 314, March 14th, was the first time I ever had a date with my husband to be. It was a blind date and he was a chemist. So 314 and pi has been special to us through the years. But the other reason that I love the analogy of a pie is because a pie really isn't good unless it is sliced. Well, for some of us who just dig in and eat the whole thing, that's debatable. But there is a fella named Carl Jung who gave an example of a four-part piece of pie. I like to use six pieces to the pie when I do speaking engagements because it shows how to keep our life in perspective or in balance, so to speak. Now, none of us have a perfectly balanced life. At least I've never known anybody that does. I've known some that tend to be there more so than others, those that can compartmentalize the parts of their life and bring them all together. But this is kind of what it stands for. The P can be the physical. The I can be the intellectual. The E can be the emotional. And the S is the spiritual. Now, those four parts, when you add two more, including family and including your work or your school, you have to balance those in as well. And I know that. My niece and her husband are both full-time working attorneys with four children, three of whom are teenagers, and one was about five years later, so a young girl, and they are balancing going from soccer to golf to ballet lessons to music lessons to school events and trying to work in some personal time for themselves. And my niece, Denise, is a pretty good example of one who is able to balance that. Physically, she still exercises at least every other day doing different kinds of aerobics and, I don't know, several things that she's been into, yoga and uh, other things. But the I in intellectually, well, she's brilliant. And certainly as she scored so high on her college and pre-law testing, she also is able to physically stay in shape, intellectually use that forward as being an attorney and helping her kids, of course, with their school lessons. And emotionally, she stays so even keel and tries not to let anything ruffle her. At least it doesn't show. Also, spiritually, she teaches a Sunday school class. She makes sure the kids are in church. She says her devotions and prays before bed, and she's just absolutely beautiful inside and out. However, there are certain things that she has to struggle with, just as we all do. And how do you balance your life? Well, I can only tell you what mine was before I gave my life to God. My life was totally a mess. Physically, you know my story of being 100 pounds overweight. Intellectually, I dropped out of school. I didn't even want to go to high school, much less college. Who would have ever thought I would get a Ph.D.? Emotionally, I was a roller coaster up and down absolutely from one day to the next. And spiritually, I had given up on God. If I had had a God in my life, he wouldn't have allowed me to have a sister who was so perfect, a younger brother who seemed so perfect, 
and my parents, who were well-loved by the entire town. I was the misfit, but when God picks you up, when you allow the spiritual part of your pie to open up, I believe he will take care of everything else. And that's why I also included school and working in there, whatever your profession is, because whatever you choose to do, he will either bless it or take you to another occupation. Our pastor likes to tell the story of how he was not only one who scored not too high on tests, so to speak, but he had trouble in school. And many of us did, too, whether we didn't like it or whether we didn't feel like we were intellectually gifted. He nevertheless went on to seminary, and he's been preaching for 10 years with services three times a day on Sundays, and we've just outgrown the church to the extent that we're now building a completely new one that will seat twice that many. So intellectually, maybe you weren't one who got good grades, but God will creatively use you in some other arena. Physically, maybe you aren't as in shape as you can be, and I know I'm not, but I do know I've kept a 100 pounds off. I try to exercise several times a week. I swim a lot. Emotionally, I ask God to keep me on an even keel so that I can bless others and not react, but in preventative mode, talk to those that I have no idea what the response will be. When I go in to do my jail teaching every Tuesday afternoon, some of those girls are angry, some of them are belligerent, some of those women have children at home, some are grandmothers that haven't seen their own grandchildren in 10 years, and it's very hard to reach hearts that have become hardened. But when you allow God to be the one who will divide your life, so to speak, into the parts and include the places that you need transformed, I promise you, as he did with me, he will give you a complete makeover, an overhaul, and he will not just bless you. You will find that you have been blessed to be a blessing. Ask God today where you need healing physically emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, in your work, in your schooling, and especially if you have family members who also need to know this, share with them that it's okay to go on with things where you don't think you did your best. It's okay to give up one area of your life to increase in another area where needed. Father, I just pray right now for those who are struggling in balancing their lives, perhaps balancing their time. Maybe they're overcommitted, as I tend to be many times, and sometimes feel like I just need to be committed. But I pray, God, that you will use them and their families, that you will spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, physically, and in their work and in their schoolwork, whatever it is, Lord God, that you will give them increase, that you will increase in those arenas, and that they will decrease to let you take over when the burden is too heavy, because you have promised that your burden is light. And I ask that on behalf of my friends listening and on myself, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. This is Dr. Deborah Pepper, Shaking the Salt. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, stay tuned. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.